So we are here today uh, for a workshop on criteria for identifying chemicals of global concern. The workshop was organized from FRAM or by FRAM together with UNITA and together with the Swedish Chemicals Agency. So we have an international audience here, people from different countries, from different organizations, from different governments, in order to uh, think about criteria and processes on how we can identify chemicals of global concern. We, and that is from, uh, together with a colleague from the ETH in Zurich, uh, Professor Martin Scheringer, have been uh, putting together a report for the Swedish Chemicals Agency on criteria that we can use for that process. And I have presented uh, that, um, that work, that report, and now we are discussing whether it should be amended, whether there are criteria that could be added on top of that. Uh, how we can embed uh, those ideas into the SICOM process, how can that be used in the long-term post-2020 uh, SICOM process that is ongoing at the moment. Uh, we are uh, here because we think that uh, this topic of uh, chemicals that warrant global action is really of high relevance in the context of a new uh, framework beyond 2020 within the agenda for the chemicals and waste uh, management. Uh, today uh, we have conventions in place which regulate about 40 chemicals on the global level, but we know that there are more chemicals that warrant global action that spread between countries uh, in uh, uh, air and water but also in trade and especially in e-commerce uh, where ordinary people become importers of chemicals. So uh, we would benefit from acting jointly on those chemicals of the highest concern and therefore we need to have criteria in order for us to identify which those are so that we can actually name those chemicals that we want to address with global joint action. Emerging policy issues are very important when talking about how to develop SICAM beyond 2020. The terminology has changed into issues of concern but the concern or the terminology or the issues may still have some relevance and are still the same. It's all about identifying issues that are of global concern and need global action but which and which cannot be handled by countries individually. I think it's quite a useful workshop so far so I haven't attended so many of uh, SICAM workshops before but um, in my eyes in my view it's uh, it's very useful to have this bit broader view just not only an EU reach view where I come from which is my background but also try to link it to a more global aspect to have more a more global aspect to it so I'm uh, very happy to to contribute to this uh, some countries have other capabilities than other and therefore it is very important to maintain one of the strengths of SICIM that the emerging issues may not have the same relevance all across the world, but some countries can do more on some issues than others. And um, today being here from a European point of view, I think it is very important that globally we also address the issue of fluorinated compounds, the PFASs, and also with time the combined exposures of chemicals, which today is very, very difficult to address. One of our priority areas uh, is chemicals in products which has a very clear international aspect to it because trade is globalized and uh, even though countries have regulations in place at the national level they it's hard for them to control what actually crosses the borders with the products and materials that they import so having a more clear way of prioritizing among chemicals um, in chemicals in products in the chemicals in products program uh, would be very beneficial and I think that what we are now looking at could be a seed for actually identifying these chemicals that should be of concern or should be of, of priority for uh, for example information disclosure it's a way of formalizing and having harmonized view on which these chemicals that should be prioritized are. So it could make the work 
with the emerging policy issue chemicals in products in Saigon much more efficient.